So in this video, I want to talk about the innate immune response to a virus. And so the first thing what we need to talk about is what are the differences between the response to a bacteria, which is actually discussed in another video, and to a virus. And definitively a cardinal difference is that a virus can infect a cell, whereas a bacteria, as long as it extracellular bacteria, it cannot. So what we're going to see, we're going to find these viral particles, which I have drawn here in purple as a star. And this has infected, for example, an epithelial cell. A lot of viruses can infect epithelial cells. So the epithelial cells are also equipped with pattern recognition receptor. In this case, as the virus is going to be in the cytosol, this cell will respond with its cytosolic pattern recognition receptor to this virus, which would be, for example, a not like a receptor, NLR, and react with the production of type 1 interferon. Type 1 interferon is a very important cytokine that is produced during a viral response. And this is actually the only cytokine that, that is really different in the response to a virus compared to a bacteria. This is the only cytokine that you find in addition in a viral response compared to a bacterial response. Otherwise, there are actually a lot of similarities in the response to a virus compared to a bacteria. We have also our macrophage sitting in the tissue. It's going to eat up viral particles via phagocytosis. Remember the slogan of the macrophage is eat and call, so eating up stuff and then also calling, calling for help from its local friends. The macrophage is also going to detect the virus via its pattern recognition receptors, abbreviated as PRRs, and react with the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF and IL-1 and chemokines like CXCL8. CXCL8, as we have already discussed, is a major chemoattractant for neutrophil. The neutrophil, with the slogan eat and die, because it's also a very good phagocytic cell but has only a very short half-life, is found in the blood circulating and will only exit once it is called. And so it uses this roll, stop, exit strategy to get to the site infection and will also just eat up viral particles and then eventually it's going to die. So our second guard in the tissue is the dendritic cell. We have already discussed the dendritic cell in the previous video. And so the slogan of the dendritic cell is eat, present and run. So it's also a very good phagocytotic cell and it will respond to the virus via its pattern recognition receptors with the production of type 1 interferon. So besides infected epithelial cells, dendritic cells are also a very important source for type 1 interferon. So as we already know, a very important function of the dendritic cell is to initiate an adaptive immune response. And to initiate a T cell response, the dendritic cell needs to present its antigen on an MHC class molecule. So now a very important question is, what is the major adaptive response that is going to be useful in a viral infection? And it's going to be a CD8 T cell that is going to be most helpful in clearing the infection. So how do you get a CD8 T cell response? For that, the dendritic cell would need to present the antigen on an MHC class 1 molecule. Well, if the dendritic cell is infected with a virus, then the rule says anyway, you're going to have presentation via MHC class 1, as MHC class 1 is the billboard for what's going on inside the cell. So if a dendritic cell is infected with the virus, it's going to present its antigen via MHC1, and it's going to go off to the lymph node to initiate the CD8 T cell response. However, if the dendritic cell is not infected and just eats up the viral particle, you would expect the presentation via MHC class 2, as everything was just eaten up and was outside the cell, is presented via MHC class 2, and then you would not necessarily expect to get a CD8 T cell response. But 
the dendritic cell has the capacity to present antigens via its MHC class 1, although it is not infected, and this principle is called cross-presentation. So the dendritic cell is going to initiate a CD8 T cell response via presentation of the viral antigen on MHC class 1, no matter if the dendritic cell is infected or not. So the dendritic cell will run off to the lymph node, will initiate a CD8 T cell response, and then eventually this CD8 T cells are going to come back via the lymph, via the thoracic duct into the blood, and then also use this roll, stop, exit strategy to really get to the site of infection and help clear the infection because they can directly kill virally infected cells. Although the CD8 T cell response is very crucial in a viral infection, we should not forget that we also always gonna get a CD4 T cell response, a T helper response, as the dendritic cell will also present the antigen via MHC class 2, as whatever is eaten up by the dendritic cell will be shown on the MHC class 2 as well. So as we initiate a CD40 helper T cell response, we're going to eventually help B cells to become plasma cells to start secreting antibodies. And those antibodies are also going to show up in the blood and are going to go into the site of infection just because there's leakiness of the endothelium and help there neutralizing the virus. Another very important innate cell that is circulating in the blood and that helps to clear viral infection is the NK cell. The NK cell is the natural killer cell and as the name already implies, it's also killing cells. Killing, for example, virally infected cells. We're going to see in another video that the killing method that NK cells and CD8 T cells are using are very, very similar. However, how they recognize their target cells is very different. As previously mentioned, the NK cell is circulating in the blood, and once there are specific chemokines released, the NK cell will diffuse to the site of infection and help clear the infection. This concludes the video on the key players in the immune response to a viral infection.